Our story happens directly in the center of the spot that had unfortunately transformed into a mass grave for endless individuals. A lot of life was lost in the tenacious journey for an unwinnable conflict. The main thing the survivors needed was to get by. Past this fundamental sense, there didn't appear to be some other reason in this world. One individual continued on through unspeakable misfortune and turned into our story's primary hero. With 98 failed missions added to his repertoire, he figured he could at last be toward the finish of his long excursion. As he strode close to the wellspring of an extraordinary, brilliant light, the giant warrior entered the chamber to wind up facing an impressive gathering of sentinel golems. He couldn't resist the opportunity to contemplate whether this was actually the 20th mission. A dull passage shows up behind this imposing column of golems, making our hero keep thinking about whether these sentinels were watching over a more significant course. With a look of resolve in his eyes, our legend began to draw his weapon. He knew that going into the room would require a test from the glimmering watchman golems. A Ridash showed up in his grasp as he called forward his weapon. The Watchmen's eyes gleamed with a new force when they looked along the edge, like they had quite recently emerged from hibernation with a purpose. These tremendous animals began to march toward our legend, their huge weapons raised. They started their coordinated attack, attempting to take him out. Fortunately, our main character's deafness helped him out, as he had the option to evade the destructive blows with D moves. This ended up being the ideal chance for a reprisal. With steadfast purpose, our legend cast the Mark of Death spell promptly over the Guardian Golem. An otherworldly circle with the troubling skull image out of nowhere showed up. With the assistance of this vile seal, our legend changed into a searing dim quality, surpassing the Watchman Golems in speed. Utilizing this speed increase, he delivered the final blow to win. The gigantic Watchman's body had a colossal expanding wound from the attack. He delivered with a satisfied grin all over. Our legend purposely put some distance between himself and his rival after this effective strike. He realized that everything had worked out as expected. When you deal harm to a foe who has been marked with the mark of death expertise, you will perceptibly expand the harm dealt by 100%. Once one of the guardian golems was crushed, the other watchmen lurched forward, taking steps to destroy our legend. He was as insignificant as a bug in the eyes of these tremendous beasts. However, terror did not stop him. In midair, our legend utilized a method known as the Evening of Death to saturate his weapon with a threatening dim quality that was intended to counter the sacred creatures. Slowly, the golems that guarded the region were completely immersed in darkness. This dim cloak gobbled up the brilliant light that had once filled the sanctuary, leaving the blessed creatures neglectful of their surroundings. Exploiting this situation, our legend delivered a staggering blow that sent a gigantic rush of energy shooting out that could quickly wipe out a whole multitude of beasts. However, our legend didn't lose his cool. It soon became obvious that not even his enormous attack had harmed the guardian golems in the slightest. With astonishing exactness, the blessed animals charged bolts that were loaded up with unadulterated discharge and ice energy and shot them toward our main character. These bolts took steps to annihilate him with each shot verging on brushing him. When this consistent attack continued, our legend realized he had to get a move on to avoid the coming peril. He jumped unflinchingly straight into the path of the advancing guardian golems, confronting them head on. Our legend had the option to create afterimages that befuddled the golems due to his staggering speed. As a counter, one of the golems fitted a few bolts into its bow and fired them so fast they broke through the speed of light obliterating pretty much every deception our legend had made. Our legend kept calm and collected despite the critical and serious contention. He even considered grinning and energetically insulting the Watchman Golem, saying that it would take more than simply their attacks to overcome him. However, his haughty look soon evaporated when a brilliant light appeared beneath him. Our legend discovered that an unexpected magic circle on the floor had laid out a trap that ensnared and completely immobilized him. By calling forth a tremendous mass of ice, the extraordinary speed he had flaunted around a few seconds earlier had vanished. Determined to get free, he gave it all that he had, slowly making the ice break. The legend was trapped, and the Watchman Golems moved toward him. As he battled to free himself, one of them was preparing to deliver a horrible blow with a tremendous lance. The cracks got more noticeable, but the ice didn't give in. Then, as he utilized another expertise, Evening Glow Obliteration, 
Our legend's eyes took on a profound dark red tint. He was liberated when a brilliant red light broke through the mass of ice trapping him. Our legend was freed by the attack, which also obliterated the Watchman Golem before him and unleashed the full power he had been holding back. Utilizing this ability also made his equipment change and improve, and he conceded that the conditions had nearly cost him. After investing a lot of significant effort fighting the Guardian Golems, our hero took the critical decision to end the contention with a single, wrecking blow. The showdown was about to reach its peak. As the dim, threatening quality around his SC turned out to be more volatile, the Watchman Golems readied their most powerful blows. Sensing that things were about to go crazy, weapons of mass destruction, bolts injected with strong energy, and seals were all prepared. Yet again, our legend fought back with a colossal forward step, gathering massive power to support his side strategy. Approaching the blow, our legend released his evening glow obliteration expertise, this time enhanced by a mind-boggling dark power. However, this time the Red Moon, a different expertise, boosted the powerful aura that surrounded him. Like the one that had loosened things up, the resulting cut had a much wider area of effect. The tremendous animals that had previously controlled the region were cut through like delicate butter, their bodies falling to the earth. As our hero landed, he was relieved to see that these formidable opponents had finally been defeated. He wandered further into this confounding area. As he pushed toward the room the Watchman had been guarding, he felt something odd come over him and looked around. It seemed like another sanctuary, yet it felt surprisingly empty. He decided to approach the entryway at the far end, uncertain of what to do next. The enchanted circle drawn right outside the door started to glow as he got closer. Settled, our legend remained in the circle, curious to figure out what might happen next. A rueful smile crossed our legend's lips as he waited, contemplating whether this would be the run that saw him finish the game on his 99th attempt. Yet his anticipation was all ruined when he saw the notice that only one player out of five was on the enchanted circle. He had to confront the brutal truth that a group of five players was required to access the boss room. The warning informed him that he would die if he didn't meet this requirement. At that moment, all the battles and sacrifices he had made felt like they were vanishing. A brilliant light surrounded him, walling him in a barrier that wouldn't move, regardless of how diligently he tried. He cursed the silliness of this last essential in his dying breaths, but it was all to no avail. His body started to disintegrate, leaving him to question whether this was really the end. His demeanor changed when he realized that this was indeed the end. The game informed him that he had died as the last second counted down. Yet amidst the despair, a rune known as Regression was activated. The 100th utilization of the rune would be ascribed to this last living legend, sending him back in time to the moment before the first mission began. Thus, the regression rune would evaporate, but our hero would once again begin his 100th regression. Before this, Korean royal residence right in the focal point of the city. The story opens on this day, which denoted the year's end. Many individuals assembled to commend the beginning of the new year. A dazzling blue quality encompassed the body of the individual. As the last five seconds of the year moved toward, his demeanor was obvious to see that he was awkward. This man got back to his previous life when he saw something. When he saw his hands, his hands shook as he understood that this was the prior second everyone was sucked into a Gotham game. This individual grasped his clenched fists, recalling that he had almost dominated the match being referred to. He was in the 20th round as of now. He envisioned how decent it is to have the option to stop time since there are presently only two seconds left before the calamity guarantees their lives. He likewise recalled what the past life framework had shown him following his death. This was the 100th time he had applied the relapse rune. It was at that point past the brink. The person, who will be our fundamental character, accepted that he would without a doubt complete the game as the last seconds of the year drew closer since it had all the earmarks of being his last open door to relapse. Then, he readied himself for the looming occasion. Furthermore, Ma considered the last essential that he couldn't meet during the game's 20th round, and that was the explanation he expected to enroll the assistance of four additional people. Then, pondering who might be best for these jobs, he began to examine his environmental elements. A few moments preceding the commencement, an extra individual was shown, now, this person was with his buddies, and they were in the core of the city and prepared to celebrate the new year, 
as they held up. One of his companions considered his post-graduation designs. The bear man contemplated whether he could simply function as a conveyance man. He posed his companion a similar inquiry. Then, it was spread the word about that this man's name was Emin. He answered the question with a grin. He expressed that he expected to turn into a crowd supervisor. When his companions heard him, they became confounded. They didn't accept that Imin treated this matter in a serious way. To Yanin's defense, since life is short, he must live it to the fullest. As these folks dealt with the way that they ought to keep away from Imin after graduation, a feeling of straightforwardness spread across their faces. Being connected with a hoodlum, after that, the uncovered man was rarely great. He examined Yanin concerning what might befall his own bus following graduation. This question evoked a picture of a desperate and soon man in his viewpoints. Then, Imin giggled and said that he wouldn't surrender his van, not even subsequent to graduating. His companions joined in, light of the fact that they thought this was funny. This one even ventured to such an extreme as to say he could play with that person for whatever length of time he wanted. One of Yanin's companions revealed that he had quite recently seen the person. While they were talking about that van, RMC's body was overwhelmed in this splendid light. At a similar second, he relapsed back to his 100th opportunity in the similar five seconds. With a grin, Y acknowledged that his companion was right. However, something felt different as he fixed his look on the individual he had harassed all through their secondary school years. This confounded Imin. This man was not the similar transport he had realized. Mick now has a more assured demeanor all over, giving the feeling that he was more established. He even dared to give Imin a look. This individual proceeded to say that RMC was totally different from who he ordinarily was, since this was the first time RMC had acted in this manner. Human turned out to be extremely bothered. His companions mediated to stop him. Just as he was going to give him an example, they advised him that he would have numerous open doors later on, and that today was currently officially the principal day of the year. In the wake of hearing their comments, Yonin turned out to be more composed and chose to exonerate RMC for the day. Them four continued celebrating after that, trusting themselves to be adults. They likewise traded blissful New Year good tidings. Anyway, a voice that appeared to be strange unexpectedly showed up and said that individuals were captivating. The voice stated that, notwithstanding their obliviousness of their conditions, individuals thought for even a second to commend the new year. Since everybody had heard the perplexing voice, they endeavored to find its source. Then, there appeared a lofty animal with white wings and a white dress. This splendid light was likewise surrounding this one. Her voice had a similar quieting quality. This celestial-looking individual then smiled, entertained at how individuals were acting nowadays. She stated that, Contrasted with different races, humans were the same as confined monkeys. The presence of this cryptic animal then, excited every individual who had gathered in the focal point of the city. They even accepted she was excessively appealing, except for MC. That was no different for every one of them. When he saw the heavenly messenger, he accepted that she had at last emerged. Even after experiencing this scene multiple times, he kept on despising it. The holy messenger endeavored to control her chuckling, but she couldn't stop. She proceeded to state that, since they all had the advantage of being charmed by her appearance, they were all trash. The holy messenger proceeded to state that, since she didn't mean to be with them for a lengthy time frame, they ought to quit agonizing over these futile things. She was more captivated and grinned as she contemplated that, since these people could see her plainly, they must have the option to hear her well too. When part of the gang became ill of her snickering, he shouted at her and requested to know who she was. As a matter of fact, this person thought she was only cosplaying as a holy messenger. Mick didn't express anything while that person was complaining. The heavenly messenger smiled the same, but this time, she turned out to be extremely peaceful. Her face took on an evil demeanor as her eyes became red. She said this scene truly bothered me. The same person who had just been hollering at her had something happen to him. This one just rushed in the head. Standing close to him, the individual had blood all around his garments. His body began to shake too, and it took them a few seconds to realize what had actually happened. Then, there was an uproarious shout all through the area. Yon was among the folks who saw the episode and shouted, What in the world was that? The heavenly messenger has spoken, but her exquisite voice was gone this time. 
She then gave an admonition to all individuals, telling them not to ever try to talk nonchalantly to her strong self. She went on by saying that these individuals coming up short on power to represent any questions, they must likewise never act fiercely around her, or they will meet a similar end as the prior individual. The heavenly messenger proceeded to say that humankind as of now had a place with a far subpar race. As she kept on talking, when they got to the part where the heavenly messenger planned to explain to them why these things were occurring to them, now, Herma could murmur. She declared to everybody that they would now play a game. Proceeding, radiating a more joyful grin and energy. Consistently, on the one, their spirits will be taken to an alternate aspect to play a game for 20 rounds. She conveyed the possibility that right now people would only act in this manner. They would spend the next couple of long stretches of their lives focusing on completing the relegated responsibilities. They would be compensated and taken back to the real world in the event that they prevailed with regards to completing those journeys. A few people were confounded to hear this. They accepted that, after they completed the previously mentioned missions, their lives would be saved. Regardless of whether they could complete the journeys, not every person would have the privilege to endure. The heavenly messenger informed the people, guessing their thoughts, with a laugh. Hermic remained standing there while it turned out to be clear why just 50% of them were allowed to experience. The only individual with a created articulation was him. Everybody in his nearby area felt like their lives were going to end. The holy messenger proceeded to say that individuals ought not be too concerned, in light of the fact that she won't take them all. For this situation, RMC could see this was the 99th time he'd heard it. Then, it became clear that only individuals between the ages of 15 and 29 would be permitted to partake overall. As he was listening, RMC had the prospect that he had never imagined getting back to the same game more than once. One of the older individuals smiled and said he was protected. After hearing the news, individuals in the age bunch that was remembered for the game were then bothered by this action. He stated that it was practically identical to adding oil to a fire. Then, none of the men mediated to separate their contention. He advised these folks not to cause problems since they could become like the departed man. The holy messenger then expanded her wings and declared that it was the ideal opportunity for them to begin. She also revealed that approximately 1.9 billion individuals would play the game. As she informed the people that the explanation was finished, they could now move on to the genuine game. Her energy level increased. Then, this white light filled the entire space. Everything vanished except for the members' bodies. Armic was obviously missing. The heavenly messenger proceeded to say that the members had just entered a region known as individual spaces, which was only visible to them. She then provided the order for everyone to form their bodies to prepare for the spirit move. This particular face was like the way in which clients customize the characters that will show up in the game. They must make an educated decision since they only have one opportunity to do this. With respect to MC, he expected he would choose the same option as his previous relapse. Now, the appearance and qualities of his previous symbol were being selected. Even his in-game moniker was the same. The side was dark. Players were taken to something else entirely just a few moments after completing the customization. It was an open field. Here, the member's symbols gradually became fully awake. This specific look was the one that Mick repeatedly chose. He had blood red eyes and dark hair. Additionally, his build was far taller than his actual height. It was also his 100th appearance in the game. He accepted that this was his true body since it was the same body from his previous relapses. He was not even expected to become acclimated to it. The symbols of other individuals were also brought into this new reality. Some of them were so shocked by their own individual customizations. Mick noticed that these folks deliberately caused their symbols to appear attractive. However, this was one of the initial mistakes that one could make. Strong for the weak in this other world, despite the fact that they stand out, it's easier to become a target. This was an expensive error, because an individual who dies in the game will also die in real life. Then, MC's attention was drawn to the individual he had been waiting for to appear. The bully who caused him so much wretchedness during his time in secondary school was, in all honesty, Hang Yangin. Blackie was somewhat let down, since he had guessed that Yanin would work on himself during the game. The Holy Messenger returned to greet the players after they had all been transported. 
She also noticed that these individuals appeared to become very attached to their new appearance. As she considered what these appealing and attractive faces would become after experiencing fear and hopelessness, she became excited. The people, who were all in spirit at that moment, were brought here. Additionally, there will be around 1.8 million members, which left some asking why they would just be able to observe a portion of it. The holy messenger laughed, believing that this dehumanizes individuals. When she revealed that there were different spaces that would accommodate all of the members, her disposition also changed. Different heavenly messengers were also continuing with the round at that moment. Now, without delay, the holy messenger began to reveal more insights about this game. As long as they could evoke it in their minds, players could access a specific kind of status window. This served as an illustration of its contents. The black side status window was the one that was before us. As the game was getting started, there isn't really anything to note here. The fact that he had lost all of his maximum level details from his past life made McMoan. Did everyone see their status windows? The holy messenger asked. This serves as a reminder of how shabby they are, she said. All they needed to do was set stronger, to make it to the end, and finish the 20 rounds. The holy messenger revealed that the reward for achieving this accomplishment would be whatever one might desire. Furthermore, they won't need to pay for any of the games that are played. Others began to consider what it is that they actually wanted. That prize was extremely appealing. To get things moving, the holy messenger smiled and said that she had something small prepared for each individual today. When the players checked their inventories, they saw something interesting. One thing has now been embedded into it, an inconsistent rune. This rune is just meant to be used once. The holy messenger explained that, regardless of whether they were only at level 1, players could already use it. Initially, this was the only thing that was given to them. After they considered the word use, players could also eat this item. The first individual to use it was a young man who looked stunned by what he saw. The holy messenger then laughed again after realizing that a few of the players were not content with the results of the rune. She proceeded to state that, since this was their luck, there isn't really anything they can do about it, save accept it. Just as they were ready to jump into the real deal, she flicked her fingers, after explaining the runes all around, particles of light began to appear. A warning regarding the player's first mission was then sent to everyone. At the start of the game, it was something that players could kind of expect to run into. To complete the task, every troll must be killed multiple times. After this round, only 50% of all members overall would be allowed to continue. After a short while, the first troll appeared. When the players saw this, they said that it appeared to be a computer-generated simulation game. Then, the holy messenger advised everyone not to become so excited. The reason for this was that she had called forward an extraordinary number of them immediately. These light bars were beginning to fill the entire space. Then, the serenity evaporated from their faces when they saw the troll's numbers before them. Individuals began to panic. The holy messenger, wearing a really threatening expression and a foreboding emanation, declared that 10,000 people and 50,000 trolls would participate in combat. They planned to fight to the death. The troll swarm began pushing toward the people when the statement concluded. These beasts moved at an exceptionally quick speed. A few players were unsure of how to respond. Anyway, there were noticeable strides as most of them stepped back. Waxa dashed into the fight, showing definitely no fear. The people behind RMC began to consider what this person was thinking. The troll's clothing was essentially too blissful. Dangerous careless A's formed expression evaporated as the beast drew nearer, replaced by this deadly expression. RMC jumped toward the troll and kicked him hard. 